I thought, folks, we would just think a little bit today about the subject of bereavement. This has been a difficult and a hard year for many people. Many have lost loved ones over the year that has gone by, and maybe because of some of the restrictions that have been put in place because of the pandemic, you feel that you haven't been able to grieve properly for a loved one that has departed. Bereavement is something that all of us will experience, uh, but yet the reality is that very little can prepare us for losing a loved one, especially someone that's been with us right from the beginning of our lives, maybe a father or a mother or a brother or a sister or maybe a grandparent or a close friend or family member, somebody we've known for all of our lives. And whenever we experience bereavement, it can be very, very difficult just to make sense of things. It can be very difficult to cope with the emotions that we feel, with the sense of loss and with a sense of just emptiness and despair whenever somebody that we love is taken from us. Sometimes people offer words of sympathy and with the best intentions in the world, undoubtedly they do that. But the reality is whenever you have lost a loved one and you're mourning the passing of somebody who was maybe your best friend in life, nobody really knows how you feel other than the Lord God himself. Sometimes it's said that time heals all wounds. I'm not entirely sure if that is true either. Sometimes time enables us to cope uh, with bereavement, maybe a little bit better, we just learn to cope. But certainly time in and of itself does not heal or mend a broken heart. After a while, after a funeral service, after a wake, whenever a loved one is laid to rest, inevitably the phone calls stop, the messages stop, and it's not often until maybe a week or two after losing a loved one that the reality of it really begins to settle in. Maybe you've lost a loved one and your heart's heavy. I encourage you to talk about it to somebody. Maybe find someone who has been through something similar. Sit down and talk with them and ask them how they coped. Seek out people that will be able to identify with you in your loss and in your bereavement. And don't bottle up your feelings, but be honest and be open with them. And if you've lost loved ones and you come to somebody and they've lost loved ones, seek to be an encourager and seek to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. The re reality is that bereavement is a reminder to us all of just how finite we are, of how uncertain life is and of how short life is at the very best of times. And so we must make our lives count. We must endeavour to live lives when we'll be able to look back from eternity's perspective and have as few regrets as possible, especially with regards to our earthly relationships. Whenever somebody passes away, it's impossible to say sorry. It's impossible to express your love. It's impossible to say the things that maybe should have been said in life. But just want to share a few simple thoughts from the Word of God to help you and to encourage you if you've lost a loved one even recently. The first thing is that the Lord Jesus Christ knows how you feel. There are some wonderful verses in Hebrews chapter 4 and I encourage you even after this little devotional message is over, lift your Bible and read them for yourself and pray over them, especially if you're a Christian. Hebrews 4 just the last two verses of that great chapter says, We have not an high priest. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's our great high priest. And the author of Hebrews says, We have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted. And that means tried or tested. In all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly onto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Jesus Christ was tested and tried and tempted in every aspect of his life. And certainly that's true with bereavement. You know, the last time we read in scripture about Joseph is whenever the Saviour was just a young boy of 12 sitting in the temple. We don't read about Joseph after that event. And then whenever we come to the cross, 
and the Saviour was on the cross and he was offering up his life as a sacrifice for our sins, one of the people, one of the few people that was gathered in his favour at the foot of the cross was his mother Mary and his disciple John. And the Lord turned to John and said, Behold thy mother. And then he turned to Mary and said, Woman, behold thy son. And that indicates very plainly and very clearly that Mary needed someone to look after her. And the reality is that Joseph must have passed away. And so sometime in his life, probably well before the age of 33, the Lord Jesus Christ himself experienced bereavement very, very acutely in the passing away of Joseph, someone who was so near to him and dear to him right from the very beginning of his life on this earth, physically speaking. And then in John 11, the Lord bids farewell to your friend Lazarus. And we have the shortest verse in all of the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35. Not only is it the shortest verse in scripture, but it's probably one of the deepest as well. It simply says, Jesus wept. That shows us his tenderness, his compassion, not just at the death of Lazarus, but at the fact that Lazarus's family, Mary and Martha and others, were so brokenhearted and so grieved and so hurt by the passing of their brother that the Lord Jesus Christ entered into that pain and loss with them and he simply wept. We said earlier that time does not heal broken hearts, but the Lord Jesus Christ does and he can if you trust him and if you let him. In Isaiah chapter 61, 1, it speaks prophetically about the ministry of the Lord and it says he came to heal the brokenhearted. And some of you, maybe right this very moment, have got a heart that is broken and you know that you cannot change that yourself. I remember speaking to a woman many years ago who had lost her husband of many, many years and she just came before the Lord. She was a lovely Christian woman after a number of weeks and she just poured out her heart in openness and honesty before the Lord and says, Lord, I understand that my husband has been taken. I understand he's gone to glory, but Lord, my heart is broken and Lord, I want you to heal my broken heart. And she just was absolutely honest with God. She says, it's still hard, I still miss him, but I know that the Lord has touched my life in a wonderful way. You see, Hebrews 2 and verse 9 says that the Lord Jesus Christ actually tasted death. He experienced death himself and he rose from the grave in great resurrection power. Physically, gloriously, bodily, he rose from the grave and therefore, there's a wonderful hope in the gospel because the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the, the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he was speaking there not just about spiritual life and abundant life, but also about eternal life. Paul, therefore, was able to say that whenever a loved one goes home to be with the Lord, we sorrow, but we do not sorrow as those who have no hope. There are some wonderful verses here in the book of Colossians, just in this very subject, the very first chapter, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where off you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. A hope is laid up for the Christian in heaven, and it's the hope of the gospel. As it says in verse number 20 of Colossians 1 again, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. And it goes on to speak in verse number 27 about Christ in you, the hope of glory. It speaks about the peace that God can give and the hope that God can give through the gospel of his son living for us, dying for our sins, shedding his blood for us upon a cross to impart to us spiritual and eternal life. The Christian has a wonderful assurance of heaven. Jesus Christ says, I go to prepare a place for you. And some of you have loved ones and they were saved and they loved the Lord and they have gone on before. And maybe you wonder, will I see them again? Will I know them again? I believe absolutely. David, King David, the King of Israel, lost a little boy in infancy. And he was able to say concerning that little child, he shall not come to me, but I shall go 
to him. Will we know one another in heaven? I believe we will. Matthew 17, the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appeared with the Saviour. and Peter, James and John, watching on, recognised them. Even though they had never seen them before physically, they recognised that it was Moses and Elijah. They knew these glorified saints. And that's a wonderful comfort. Reminds me of two old people. They were sitting together. They'd been married for years. And she turned around to him and said, Do you think we'll know one another in heaven? And he says, Well, do we know one another down here? And she says, Of course we do. And he says, Well, do you think we're going to be bigger Egypts up there than we are down here? Friends, there's a wonderful hope in the gospel. I encourage you today, if you've lost a loved one, just cast all of your care and all of your burden upon the Lord. He'll sustain you. He'll help you. Come to him with your broken heart. He said, come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.